Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to continue our talk about Omega 4, and we're going to dive into the SAS, uh, the, basically the styling structure, and how it differs from things that you're used to, but it really allows for uh, complex, large websites to be organized, and it keeps your code really great, um, and just all around super nice. So, uh, we're going to get started by talking about this styles.scss file and this is just in your sas folder it's in the root level of your sas folder and it's just and it's whatever your theme is that styles.scss and you notice this this file doesn't contain a whole lot of information in fact the only thing it really contains is this body background purple that we threw in here originally and now let me go ahead and just remove this line and this is what it looks like when you first set up your set, uh, your Omega project, right? And so you'll notice all these import statements. And these import statements are something in SAS that allows you to bring in additional functionality, libraries, uh, partials, that sort of thing. So we see these uh, these first four are importing external libraries. So this is importing Compass. Uh, then it's importing, uh, Compass is a library that allows for all sorts of predefined mixins that perhaps are, uh, you know, make it so you don't have to type browser prefixes for uh, CSS3. And there's a, a bunch of really great utilities within Compass. So uh, check out the Level Up Tuts uh, series on SAS and Compass. There's a lot of great videos there. And then we have Breakpoint which is an, a media queries library, which is going to be very, very important to making a responsive website here. And we have Singularity GS. Singularity GS is the grid system that we're going to be doing in these tutorials. You can also use Suzy. However, you'll notice that Suzy is not imported, so this site is not going to be using Suzy, despite the fact that it's in our gems file. So if we wanted, we could be importing Suzy here instead. But I've actually grown very accustomed to uh, Singularity. I like it a lot. So we're going to be using Singularity, which is the default with Omega 4. And now we have Toolkit, no CSS. Uh, Toolkit is another SAS library that contains some uh, great little tools that can help you. Uh, of course, we're going to go over exactly what those do in later videos. Now, um, after importing our libraries, it's split up and there's four more import statements. So the difference here is these are libraries and you're not going to edit breakpoint and you're not going to edit compass. Uh, but down here, these import statements, these are actual SAS files that you're going to be writing yourself. And using a SAS extension called globbing, it allows you to import any file that's in these folders uh, just without ha um, without having to declare that file. So typically in SAS, if you wanted to import um, a file within the variables folder, you would have to do it like this, and then you would have to say the name of the file here. So if you wanted to import, um, let's look in our variables folder, uh, we have colors. If you wanted to import colors, you'd have to say colors just like this. So we want to say import variable colors. And then in addition to that, if we wanted to import our legacy, we would have to say uh, legacy, right? Basically, anything that was in here, we'd have to import separately. But using the SAS globbing extension that comes with it, uh, you can see it gives you a little bit about it here. Um, that if we say, let's import anything that's in the variables folder, and then anything that's in then a folder of that. That's what these asterisks are for. So this gives you the option of having uh, a colors SCSS file, or if you had a folder within here. So let's say, let's do a new folder. Uh, and we can just say, we'll call it test for now. And inside of test, I'm going to have a new file, and this new file is going to be underscore test.scss, spelling correctly. Now if we type something in here, let's do body bg um, purple. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm just doing this obnoxious body color because it's easily noticeable. Actually, let's change it to yellow so we can actually see that this happened in action. Um, now, if we come back to our page, the background is going to be yellow. So 
we didn't actually have to tell our styles.scss file to look for this test.scss in particular, but it knew that it, we wanted to bring in everything that was within our variables folder and compile it into our CSS file. So if you haven't worked with SAS a lot, you might be wondering what's with the underscore thing. Well, the underscore, these are partial CSS files, and what they do is they get imported into uh, whatever your final uh, CSS file is. So instead of having a thousand different CSS files, there's not going to be a test CSS file. This code itself gets compiled right down into styles.css. And uh, here it is. So that's one of the ultimate benefits about using SAS and globbing is that, I'm gonna delete this, is that you can have your CSS broken up into a whole bunch of different files keeping it really organized, and then you don't have to worry about uh, importing all of those files or adding them together because it automatically adds them together for you. Now, the first one we have is variables. And the reason why it imports variables first is because variables are most likely the thing that you're gonna be using throughout any of your other style sheets. So you would set your variables uh, to be all sorts of things. In fact, colors are a way that you would define pre-used colors in your site. So if we wanted to have the link color, so let's say we want our default link color to always be uh, red, right? So we're gonna say link and then colon, and then we can just say red. You could have a specific color here. Uh, keep in mind, uh, I'm just using these really ugly colors to make things obvious. Um, so we have link as red, and now if we went into our styles sheet, we could then uh, say, so now if we come and give our anchor all of the color of link, uh, you'll see that it compiles it all down and we're using this color, right? So your browser or your SAS is able to say, all right, um, first import the variables and then uh, your website's going to, or your style sheets are gonna know whenever it sees this link color to use the link variable that's in your variables. Now, what are some other things that you're going to be declaring in your variables file? I mean, your variables folder. Well, you can give all sorts of stuff. So basically you could use variables for your grid sizing. So um, when we get into singularity, we're gonna be creating a new grid.scss inside of our variables and deciding our different uh, you know, total grid sizes, maybe our gutters or our vertical spacing, that sort of thing. You're going to be defining your colors, your sort of general font sizes, legacy browser support stuff will go in legacy, but anything that you need, a variable that you need to, a value that you reuse, you want to want to put into variables. And this just allows your code to be really flexible because uh, let's say you take this site to the, your client and your client's like, well, this red is too ugly. It's too red or something. Or this yellow is, this red is too red. So we want this to not be uh, this color red. So we come back and we say, okay, let's try a new red. So we have this other red that's maybe a little bit more appealing. Come back to our site and it's now this tone, more toned down version of red, and it's changed everywhere, even though, of course, we're only using this link color once. But let's say we were using this link color throughout our website. You change it in one spot, and it's going to update it everywhere that you have a variable. Okay, well, this is just the first little bit of the SAS file structure. And I'm gonna stop right now only because I don't want this to go super long and I'm going to cover the last three abstractions, base, and components in the next video. So as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment on this video or hit us up at Twitter Level Up Tuts. And uh, just so you know, this information provided here is really, really helpful. So anytime you see comments in these stuff, just take the time and read it because it's gonna make you understand this stuff better. And also in the next video, we're gonna tear through Ohm a little bit, which is the, the theme that comes with it to see how they're doing things too. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up at Twitter or Level Up Tuts. Let us know what you're thinking. Thanks for watching. Bye.